Lights, camera, action. That's the one thing I don't like about this label maker. Look how much space is wasted. I don't understand why it does that. I have to cut them down whenever it's like a tight spot. Well, that's how much it gives you? All that wasted? Yeah. Really? So you can, so you buy it quicker. Does that look centered with the other? Cool. So, air and lights, which isn't wired yet. Tomorrow or yeah, we'll the next day. That we can finish yeah, it. it's kind of wired, but the lights aren't here yet. Cool. What next? Mm. Why are the other one? <laughs> <laughs> Is there a gap right here, Mark, to run the wire through? By any chance? Do you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes. Barely. So a little update on the Ford battery trucks. What we did was we took plywood down here and laid it out, cut it out to the bed. Then we put these racks. And the racks are designed at a slope here. It's hard to tell, but they are sloping down that way. Uh, that is to provide the batteries um, kind of a way to maintain a pitch down toward this side rather than sliding out this way. We also have a barrier here to keep the batteries from falling into the center. And then we've done it to this side, have evenly spaced pieces of wood all the way down to um, hold proper, the hold the battery groups. So basically there's gonna be a group here, a group there, a group here, and different group sizes um, will be in different rows. Now, the reason that we went with this center design, the center walkway design, is because this space in the middle, you wouldn't be able to access from the doors anyway. So, we also have a floor jack here with two different size star wrenches. The floor jack handle here held in place with these pieces of wood, so that is secured. A gas can there, and then the compressor in the back. Have it set up right now this switch is going to control your air compressor and then this switch is going to control your lights uh, we're waiting on an order waiting on the order but we have strip lights that we're going to run along this rail along this rail and then back to the front to provide lighting at night so the guys can see inside the back of the trucks all right so this larger gauge wire runs down to here and this is a this is a junction box that allows the guys to plug their jumper cables into this here uh, instead of opening the hood all the way and jump starting a car. So this is a quicker and more convenient way to jump start the cars. And it just tucks away behind the dash, behind the grill. For those who don't know, the white Peterbilt, which is sitting over there, the ECM, the engine control module, whatever you want to call it, um, basically decided to stop working. Uh, we replaced it four years ago and it uh, has been going strong ever since and it died 
yesterday as I was driving it. So luckily we weren't far because Alex here just got back from El Centro like an hour before and somehow it didn't die from there and back and it died on me here locally. So waiting on that, it'll be here tomorrow and then it'll be up and running. So all new trucks or all of our trucks get this camera system installed into the truck. Uh, one, it provides GPS tracking and two, it provides uh, just a sense of assurance um, say you get into an accident and they're claiming it's not your f or it, it's our fault and uh, it really isn't our fault. We can show the video footage um, and back it up. Um, so well, there's a few pieces to this uh, puzzle here. One is this cover and this uh, cover basically locks it down so the drivers don't have access to it. Only I and a select few have access to the camera. Um, and then the camera itself is here and the camera consists of a few pieces. One being this hotspot thumb drive that provides um, elect, uh, mobile, like cellular connection for the camera, allows us to live stream and stuff like that. Um, and then additionally, of course we have the camera itself and uh, a few miscellaneous mounting tools, um, a USB cable to connect this to the camera. Um, a wiring loom. Um, so basically what you need is you need a positive, a negative, and a um, auxiliary or accessory co connection so that when you turn the key off the system knows that the truck is not running and then after whatever two three hours of not the truck not running the camera will shut off. Um, and then we have the mounting bracket this sticks to the windshield and this is also the GPS unit. So. We're gonna go ahead and uh, start wiring this all together. Mark's already got some uh, places that we are, that is basically already ready to go, so it shouldn't be a very hard install. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and throw it all together and we'll take you along. Okay, so what we're gonna do is mount the camera. So that clips onto this mounting bracket here, like so, and then this is an adhesive that mounts to the windshield. Um, so one of these cameras faces forward and one faces back. I forget which is which, so but it's all adjustable. We can figure it out here once we get it situated. Now this plug-in is from the uh, from the GPS unit, and this goes into the GPS in um, port on the camera. And then this here is the lockdown device. that allows the camera to be locked into place so that no one can get to it. So the USB cable goes from here to here and then the thumb drive goes from here to there and this all gets tucked into the um, into the lockdown device. So as you can see, the thumb drive is concealed into here. And then all we do is, well, first, looks like we gotta open it up. So let me get the key wherever I threw it. Oh, here it is. So we can take the key here and unlock it. So we can take the key Unlock it. You change the ladder? Not yet.
Okay, so we have the lockdown device situated, the camera is oriented. Now we take the key and we are going to lock it. And now this device is not able to be taken off. Um, so let's go ahead and stick this to the stick this to the windshield, and then we got to run the wiring loom down to the fuse panel down there to get it to um, to power up. Okay, so here's the back of the camera system. So what we're going to go ahead and do is peel this adhesive back off. And then we will be able to stick the camera system into place. We just need to find a good spot for it. That looks good right there. As you can see, the camera system is mounted into place now. We have the front facing camera, oops, and then the rear facing camera. Take the cap off of that, it's already off. Now we just have to take this wire and run it up along the headliner to the fuse panel. So far I've managed to run the wire up here, through this panel, up along this panel, and then along the headliner here. Now the issue that we're gonna run into is that this A pillar here is gonna have to be removed. So uh, I've dealt with Ford F-150s before, not this newer model, so I'm probably gonna have to pull this cap off here, pull this handle apart, and uh, run the wire down through here. Our main goal, our main goal is to get down here into the fuse panel. Okay, so actually change of plans, I was able to do something a little different. So I went ahead and peeled away the weather liner for the doors, and what we're gonna be able to do is run this along the headliner, tuck it back here behind the uh, this A pillar trim. So I'll just follow my screwdriver basically, just like so. Alright, and now we can just run it all the way down here along the trim. Then, then what I went ahead and did was pulled away this AC panel and we're gonna be able to sneak it right down through there. So down through here, and then the fuse panel is right back there. So this is gonna be good. I'll go ahead and run that down, put it back together, and show you what it looks like. All right, so the wire is routed down there. Mark already took and wrote down the fuses that we're gonna use, and we're gonna use these fuse tappers to uh, tap into those. So here we have fuse 37 as an intermittent uh, fuse which means that when the key is off, there's no power. When the key is turned on, there is power. So we'll do the white cable to that, and then a red cable to one of these constants, and a black to a ground. And then this camera will be good to go. We just turn the key on one more time. Alright, cool. Off. That's good. Okay. Alright, so the green light represents the camera. The blue light represents a GPS signal. Green solid means the camera's working. Blue solid means the GPS unit's working. White solid is our... Um, our internet connection so we're waiting for that white light to go solid to indicate that we have a good connection with the internet meaning that the truck is being tracked on the tracking system all right everybody so as you can see we have a solid white solid green solid blue that is a good sign so now what we'll do is get on the tracking system and check the camera angles and make sure that they are all squared away so i will show you guys what that looks like uh, this is on my phone, so it isn't like really designed to be used on the phone, but you can use it on the phone. Uh, so I just wanted to show you guys what we got going on here. So as you can see, the truck is here and it is blue, and it has a weird name right now because I haven't renamed it to this unit. But basically what we can do is click on the unit, and we can go here and we can live stream. 
so there we are and there I am showing you guys what we're doing. So that's the uh, in-cabin view. Let's confirm that. Okay, yeah, so that's the in-cabin view. So the angle of that looks good. It uh, captures the driver's seat and everything like that. Now we can switch to front view. And that is the front view. All right, everybody, so we are here at our yard across the street. We have a yard across the street here that we store stuff for long-term storage. One of those being this RV that completely burnt down. Um, I guess not completely, but I guess it didn't completely burn down, but it is uh, totaled, I would say. Um, so what happened here was this RV was pulling that boat coming down the Indio grade and um, they're deeming it a brake fire and it caught fire and wrecked some havoc. So as you can see, did some serious damage in here. Everything is absolutely burnt. All the windows popped out. Looks like they tried to get as much as they could. Here's where the bedroom would have been, and man, luckily they all got out safely, and no one was injured. Here was a mattress. You can you can see all the way through the RV there. Here's the other side. So my dad and Roberto responded to this call and what they did was they picked up the front end with the rotator and backed that Trail King trailer under this RV and towed that away. And then what they did is they actually towed the boat with the flatbed uh, just on the ground because the tires were still intact on the trailer. Although the boat is completely burned. So we'll go ahead and check the boat out now. All right, here's the boat. So the boat obviously caught fire when the back end of the RV caught fire. That's why the only the front end is majorly burned and then the side of the fiberglass here is all right. Although it did get to the engine and everything back here. Um, so this boat is totaled as well. So yeah, there will be a video of this recovery uh, coming up here in a few days. I just got to go through and edit it and uh, then we will get it posted. So stay tuned for that guys and you will be seeing that. All right, so I am gonna go ahead and call today a day. Uh, tomorrow is looking like a busy day. We have the lights to install on the F-150 and uh, I'm sure we'll get some calls coming in as well. And I'm sure you guys will see those, hopefully. So with that being said, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, like, comment, subscribe. Thank you for watching. Let me know in the comments what you thought about the video and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching, guys.